we het hebben over uh, the dance and a word. Hello Ton, how are you? The dance of words, how language shapes our understanding and experience of dance. That is what it's going to be today. Are you ready for it? Yes, of course, Sean. It's a beautiful theme to speak about. And uh, welcome, listeners. And we can start, John. Yes, of course, of course. Well, welcome. You know, this is one of these episodes where we uh, are just the two of us. Now, hope uh, you guys uh, think that's uh, not a big problem. Uh, and uh, once in a while, uh, if you have followed us for now for a little bit, we will also have some guests. Um, and sometimes that's about the same topic as we talk today. But today, Ton and I just talk about the topic of language and words in dance and how it influences education, learning, etc., etc. Ton, just take it away. What are your first thoughts when I said dance and the experience of words and language? Okay, I didn't, when I was younger, I didn't mm -hmm. realize that words are connected with movements mm -hmm. because my first day at school, I learned the words and you learn the meaning, but there was no connection to movement actually. Mm. But now I realize when I'm older, when I say on, uh, in, over, if you would do that with your body over the table, under the table, then if you could imagine what, how your body would react, then I would learn much more faster the words. But this wasn't the case. And what, and what you think, John? Sean? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, definitely for, for me, of course. Um, try to approach it a little bit as a mental coach i think uh, that the quality of your thoughts is in direct relationship with the quality of your movement right uh, the richer your language is around and you do a lot of that work on the richer your is your language is around uh, what you bodily wants to express you know um you know the you know the more you can actually um, discuss and, and and choices you can make so that's a a little bit more mm -hmm. abstract approach of the same topic, I hope. Yes. Um, actually, if you say a word like standing, and you would translate standing, the sound, because I understand the word standing, mm -hmm. standing, then my body could react on two, um, on two words, on stand and ding and ding. So I could make two, um, how do you say, um, suddenly uh, movements. I could do. And um, and when I stand, you can do this on thousands of ways. So we need a little bit more context and how to stand. But when somebody would say in German, not German, I understand, in Chinese standing, and I not know the sound, then probably I will or sit or, or, or I was already standing then, um, but I didn't understand the sound and the word and I could not interpret it in a movement. Yeah. Does that sense, Sean? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, actually. That's, um, that's, I think that's a very interesting thought because we use that very often, right? Like stay uh, maybe uh, with the word standing, you could say stand up which immediately sounds more like a command and people yeah. in movement would react a little bit more sudden and, you know, direct. But that type of intonation, um, I, we only have that in the languages that we really understand well. For instance, you and I speak German, uh, to some extent maybe French and definitely Dutch, so where we could do that. But if we have to do it Chinese, that's probably, if we already know the word stand, we probably can say it only in one way and hopefully they understand what we're saying. But we cannot not mm -hmm. give it so much emotional value like stand up now instead of stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, absolutely, yeah. Sean. Th that's interesting. And, mm -mm. Yes, absolutely. And also mm -hmm. uh, between dancers, or persons, I not call them dancers. If you know the word standing, 
and I know the word standing, it will not say that we on the same way will stand. Nope, no. And uh, at the same moment will move. Somebody is from the perceiving slower and he, they hear it, but didn't listen well. Oh, I must stand. Oh, that, so yeah. He, yeah. I didn't know. So if you not give context and the other one understands understand it immediately, that could be yep. also in, uh, so you had also an example in your lessons. Uh, you told me that one that you did some uh, dynamic quality of one word and you gave some examples, Sean. Maybe you can uh, say this to the listeners too, this example. Yeah, I'm not sure what example <laughs> you, uh, you, you specifically mean. Uh, you can tell me if you know what example I mean, but I have several, uh, I have several of those uses yeah, of the word. Uh, take when, one. Yeah. Take so, for, for instance, uh, when I say make yourself as tall as possible, right? Then people, mm. you know, first of all, they believe that they can make themselves taller, um, mm. which, you know, which is a movement, but we can that later. And then I typically ask them after that, and now make yourself even taller. So there are that's a that's a few layers in there. First of all, making yourself tall, you have only one length, but in people's perception, they do this, and as tall as possible. And then I say, make you even taller. Then I also mm -hmm. give them a mental image that they can still do more. So that's the use of mm -hmm. language, uh, uh, purposely yes. used for movement, but also expanding people's. Uh, thinking in what they can and can do. Yes, I don't know if the children are more clever in the United States, but I don't <laughs> think it will be the same. Um, but when I use the words bounce, a rebound, swing, all qualities, ticking, uh, strobing, if you not know the words, how the yeah. body will do that? You can't. And actually, you can bounce with almost all the body uh, parts. I have 10 in the gem, 10 body parts. With all, you can bounce or rebound. And what I did is uh, my children were between 10 and 15 years. And I gave this example. And if you would understand bounce or rebound, still the quality of that uh, movement will be different by each student because you understand the bounce different. Somebody bounce fast, somebody bounce with the head, somebody bounce with the pelvis, and um, someone does a quite large or big movement, and the other one a quite small one, and there there is a difference. So, and this is why you train on the floor with a trainer, not with a teacher, with a trainer, you um, train to get this more equal, the same. And... Uh, understanding, yeah. the understanding, the same. Yes, the understanding of it, of the word first, but also in the body that, that looks equal in the same tempo, in the same effort or in the same mus muscle tonus or muscle tension. Uh, for the listeners, if you not know what tones is this. And yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. So a couple of things that we said here, if we use words, then it's first of all, do we have as teacher trainers with students the same meaning of the word? Remember, we had that in Dutch where we talked about chair. If I say chair to you, but I don't explain in what chair we're talking about, then we might think we talk about the same chair, but uh, I talk about, you know, a nice lazy chair and you talk maybe about a chair for your desk and we have a completely different picture in mind. So that was an example that we used. So that's the same meaning. And then, of course, uh, a harder topic is consistent use of the word for the same thing, <laughs> which, you know, could also be uh, very challenging if you don't know the difference between bouncing and trembling for instance then you might use one time you use bouncing with your head and the other time you use trembling which is completely two different things as long as we 
And then thirdly, which is the harder one, is the intonation of the word that we use. So that so yes. meaning, this consistency, is, intonation. Yes, absolutely, uh, Sean. And the word, when it's in your head, mm -hmm. you can go more extreme in the word, like bounce or bounce, or yeah. not slower, bounce, bounce. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, or X, X, bounce. Yeah. X, yes, yeah. it, it depends how you, how extreme you want to pronounce that word in your mind and in your body, and how you can bring them as twins together. Yeah, nice, nice. That that even goes uh, almost beyond the meaning of a word because it, then it comes also to the sound of the word itself. You send me a music piece that goes only about two sounds boom and tuck but they use mm. it boom boom tuck tuck boom boom tuck tuck sometimes they do boom boom yes. tuck 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 boom boom and so they use only those two sounds but it's a whole song and the the possibilities is almost endless how you can yes. use that in the instrument so that, that's interesting yes. too the and also the terminology mm -hmm. what i use in my lesson and we have both uh, when i I cannot speak for you, but uh, we use the same terminology and this helps us to understand yeah. um, what we mean with it. But still the execution could be different. Yeah. yeah. And but somebody who's, who knows not the terminology, then um, it will be a challenge uh, to get this on one level together. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where, uh, let me just do blatantly do a commercial for the, the method of gem you know that the, the book that Tom has written one of the beauty things that I think is in there, there are many but one of them is actually to make that language consistent and uh, so there are things that Tom in his book just clarifies words and sometimes uh, we actually did it even together we had to come up with completely new words of expressions of things that didn't ex uh, exist before so Jem gives us also a language to teach and listen, but Ton, I think you said it correctly, we first need to still use it in a pretty consistent way. So I think a lot of people understand when I say the word pathway, but how we use it in Jem, the word pathway is very specific and, uh, and, and you and I use it, I think, you know, exactly in the same way because we we try to teach it according to that methodology so a pathway can only start from a body part when the body part bend stretch or rotate mm -hmm. and it could be also how it starts gradually and end suddenly or it starts suddenly and it ends gradually and if you not understand the words then and this, the terminology and your choice isn't there and the teacher has to tell you which choice you have to make in that word actually you are thinking and train them how you think and uh, i would say that would be not the proper way so first i would explain the understanding of the word how i understand it Mm -hmm. And uh, if they understand the same how I understand it, maybe we come on the same um, level to each other. There is no level, but on the same understanding. Same understanding. Yeah, I sometimes do, Ton, that, uh, you know, I, I still also use... Uh, use words from that's coming from Laban. If you guys don't know who Laban is, uh, Rudolf Laban was, uh, you know, one of the early, you know, dance researchers and developers of a method around, around dance and, you know, find them if you don't know what it is, but I use still words from them, but I always say, let's say, take the word light. Then I say in the context of the lesson of today, this is what I would like us to understand about light. Eh? lightness so if you come to another teacher and he gives a different meaning just doesn't mean that my re meaning is wrong or him but then can we agree that in the context of this lesson or when you teach with me or tom in this case uh, this is what we mean with bending and rotating you know so yeah. 
that that I, that that helps i guess yeah i, I had also one word in the lessons mm -hmm. uh, in my lesson mm -hmm. technique mm -hmm. so the dancers use many times technique yeah and then yep. i asked to the dancers what you mean with technique mm -hmm. straighten my leg um, rotate my leg uh, rotate my foot okay I said to them, I understand technique differently. I understand the 10 body parts what I have in my um, method. It's the coordination between the movements what are moving from the body parts and the body parts who are active on that place. And it uh, sounds like easy, active on the place and acting moving, but actually they need each other there are um, brother and sister they need each other yeah. and if you realize that you'll be active with um say my hands here i do an example they are active still and i move my head yes now my fingers fast my head slow but the rest is on their place i sit still my feet are on the same place so this is the coordination of body parts what are moving and not moving this is what i understand about technique and people sometimes give me such a difficult explanation that i not can follow it anymore yeah 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 i i totally agree uh, the word technique is probably one of the uh the bigger ones in there too um for me going a little bit maybe more in my specialism which is uh, very often uh, around emotional expression where i get all uh, uh, all kind of explanations um and then the other word that i would like to bring in today is also you did a lot of good work in there is the word of energy in dance i mean can you you know we hide don't you know it, it's a very fake thing and if you keep things fake and dancing and, or any teaching, actually, you can teach it. If you don't know the meaning of it, better you don't use the word because you can teach it. You cannot just say, give me more energy. So what do you try to ask of that student? Most people probably kind of know what you mean, but it still could be wrong. <laughs> you know, when wrong in this case is, is rightly used. Um, yes correct this happened also with other words like mm -hmm. energy and power, power energy and force mm -hmm. and if you not know the difference or you understand it differently energy and <clears throat> force and you didn't do a research about it then we get a different understanding of the movement from it and the same with feelings emotions people mix this word mix the words the same with instinct, intuition. And um, there are many examples where people um, mix these words. Yeah. And uh, very interesting, actually, because when you ask, can you explain me uh, the word, then first they uh, use the words, but didn't think what is the deeper meaning of that word. Yeah. Because the words are connected with your movement and if you understand it differently the outcome is also differently of the movement yeah and um, this happened many times in the lesson and then they say john why you want uh, to speak about these words i want just to dance but if you just dance and you not understand it what you are dancing then what you are changing See, that's an, that's actually now you come to maybe the overall, you know, meaning of hopefully this podcast is because dance in itself could mean so many things. Mm -hmm. If someone says, I just want to dance, that probably means completely something different for me than someone who comes in my lesson and just want to learn how to socially do um, a salsa. So yeah, I just want to dance yeah. uh, just just for fun, and there's no there's no care. It's just really enjoying yourself and spending time with. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Uh, yeah. You and I as a dance 
co- as choreographers, trainers, we we think about quality of dance and and all kind of of objective and subjective things in dance. But for a lot of people, that might not be true. And if uh, a classical trained ballet boy comes in and says, "I just want to dance," does he want to have more freedom? Does he want to do the classical ballet? What does he want? Right. So the word dance in itself already there's not one real yes. definition for it no and when you would dance mm-hmm. um just from your feelings because your feelings are the source and the outcome is the form it's your yeah. body which is your gestures it's your facial expression it's um everything what moves get a definition and if you not know that definition by yourself and you just move, then my next question would be from the word, do you have influence on it then? Yeah. Can you influence it or not? Yeah. And can you manipulate it then? Yeah. If you want to manipulate it. Yeah. If you want to manipulate it, can you manipulate it? And to what extent? Yes, that would be my question, actually. What do you think about that one, Sean? No, I think that's that is. Uh, I think that is sometimes. Let me be careful here because we <laughs> we go on slippery ground sometimes, specifically in the ballroom dance world, when when people say, "I think it has to be this way," where you say, "Well, that oh. depends on the choice you make," which we, you and I, often find out that people think there there is one way only and that would be scary in my mind but you also take away the choice and if you take away the choice you immediately take away the ability to manipulate yes absolutely i'm agree and there yes i think it's not slippery uh sean because Mm -hmm. when you understand the words differently Mm -hmm. and the receiver understands it also differently then we have a different of a meaning there Mm. Yeah, or, or understanding, yeah. Or yeah. understanding, yes. And um, if if we would dance and would use these words, I would ignore by my, for myself the words, the subjective words, good, wrong, natural, normal, beautiful, ugly, because these words saying nothing without any context. And... I understand in my lesson, this is judgment, actually. Yes, all dancers, this is judgment. Um, they use these words. And these are related with their past and their environment, how they learn these words, these words, and how they translate it into movement. And some of them, they are afraid to... Um, release that try to understand the words and good not exist and you tell always good would be an end point and if you understand that good would be an end point there is no super good because good is already the end point then it would be also not ultra super good because you try to put something above it good is good and good can be not better Yeah, yeah. No, I I always liked uh, that explanations of the two words good and um, and perfect. Tom got a phone call, which is nice. You know, <laughs> it's it's live. We always do a podcast live, by the way. So uh, although we don't, you know, put them out live, but we do them live, and we don't uh, do that. But yeah, I always like that explanation for you if you use words uh, like good and perfect. So it is perfect, and sometimes we say that in just you know casual talk but if you make that a really a thing of you you know when is it good then it you you see there is a clear endpoint which um, like i did with that example is can you make yourself as tall as possible if this is as tall as possible my next question could not be answered and make it even taller and everyone can do that so they immediately that's why i often with new groups i always start with uh, with this little thing to immediately make them understand why we stay away uh, not if we talk normally of course but stay away from these subjective words um, 
because it has a teaching. It's not because we, we want to be very philosophical. It has a teaching uh, a teaching ID behind this, these subjective uh, words. doesn't mean that if we just talk and say, hey, this is, uh, you know, this, this, this coffee tastes good, that I mean there is no other better coffee, then we know what I mean with that. That's perfectly fine to say it in that way, you know. Um, yeah, I think I think that is uh, that is for me still. Uh, I noticed specifically with newer dancer an incredibly challenge to to do that in the right way to not over, you know, deliver a lot of these ideas that that we have about words and language. Um, so how do you see that with 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 newer students? Uh, I yes, uh, actually the right way don't exist. Does not exist. <laughs> not, not not exist. With new students, mm. I see it like that. Um, I try when they never danced. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a di different with it. Um, then I start, of course, first to learn them a few movements, and step by step, I will use also my terminology, mm -hmm. and then step by step they learn this and they. Th get free and free and more free in their mind and if there is understanding so you start immediately as um, education from the beginning immediately how i want it and how i want it is that uh, you are not stuck in your head because people are in the beginning afraid and they say i don't uh, can dance i not feel the rhythm um I never will learn that. So they start immediately with, uh, they say it's difficult. And I say, no, it's a challenge. And when it's a challenge, it sounds more positive already. And when they say, oh, okay, it's difficult, I will never learn that. Then you go already with these words in a process, in the process that the body will not develop in that one. You, you can hear it that I use develop and not um, uh, better or um, will learn. And of course you will learn. When you learn these words and I begin with these new students who never dance, I try to approach it so, po so positive as possible and that they can grow also. And when they grow and develop, I will also pronounce that and say, oh, well done, you are so growing since the last time you developed and then I give context, this and this and this and this. And then because when it no, not get context, then they not know where they are growing in. And, uh, and then you can see that uh, body and mind comes more together. And this is the beauty of it, I, I, I think. Dancers who come and who dance already, uh, that makes it uh, for me more challenging. Mm -hmm. So I not use the word difficult, <laughs> I use challenging. challenging. Yeah. Be be because they have in their backpack already learned different words and they connect different uh, thoughts to it. Yeah. And mostly it's conservative because they want not to change. And for me, it's challenging to break these patterns in their head and to let them understand what I understand from the words. But mostly is it the perceiving of the air and the eye what the word means in translating to a movement. And if they have this old picture in it or the picture, not old, but the uh, past picture in it, then it gets a, really a big challenge for them to release that. Yeah. And it mostly it's more about afraid and to be not accepted. Right. Or, yeah, or, or some sort of a maybe conditioning already from uh, what they have learned before. Um, because with, with experienced dancers, they um, sometimes, you know, feel that they already have... Uh, or they might have an understanding that there is uh, uh, only a good and a right way to do things, uh, depending on what uh, what culture they come from, what teachers they had. Sometimes it's uh, just a little bit 
you know, um, well, let's put it in this way different. And I'm going to talk a little bit about these use of words as well with new students because they're kind of a blank page. So, you, mm -hmm. you know, we mm -hmm. can write on it whatever we want, which gives a big responsibility on us as teachers too. Uh, right. And, uh, and the way you and I grew up, and specifically when we started to follow a certain dance education, we both came from the from the from the ballroom world. So specifically, we got we were given one little gray book for the ballroom and one red book <laughs> for Latin. This is what we had to learn, and this was the only way to do it to do it correctly, right? That's that's the belief that they tried to put in our head that never worked for me, and neither did it for you, Tom. But that's at least what they say. And when you have to do an exam, they look at you know, yeah, no, the book says you know it needs to be one quarter turn to the right and otherwise it's not correct like, okay. yes but still you not learn dancing from a book no you and can't you i can't. put it in my fir first page you did yeah you, you have theory and you have the pra practical way and actually to train it into the, your body mm -hmm. and when mind and body comes together in the words then um, you come on one uh, level actually and you stay close by yourself also that's also very important you're not uh, um, if you have a different understanding from one word i'm very happy if you have that one and uh, then we can look for balance for it and once we come to each other and they go to practice mm -hmm. then both are happy because we speak the same language and language is built up by sounds and the sound and the articulation of that one makes your movement and if you want just like not use words and not use the language but you use the language as a count one two three four and one two three or one two three four five six seven eight then i think you take the soul of out of it of that and important is because when i have like also words oye como va la ritmo if i would have that song then i would use oye como va la ritmo then that would be very important for me to translate these language sounds into movement. But some people, many, also judgment, two, three, four, one, two, where is, where is then, oye como va? Because this is such a unique piece of music where the words are in it, the language, the lyrics, and you ignore everything, the, the sounds, the words, and you just count it. The soul yeah. is out of it. Yeah, yeah. There mm -hmm. is, of course, I think, use for all uh, for all of these things. Um, help people a little bit understand how music works. We often start with the count of rhythms and accents in the music as well. But so there is already a difference if you do uh, one, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two. It's already different when you do one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. So I already give a little bit. You can hear it. A lot of people might not even hear the difference, but I now accentuate constantly only the same two numbers, which very seldomly happens in music. But um, but one people, one person probably told us that a cha cha is always one, two, three, four, and one. Well, no, it's actually one, two, three, and then so whatever that is. And then I always ask uh, students to sing it. But then okay, now we do we take a different number, and it gives it slightly different. Um, <coughs> so there is some use to it, but and most students, most at least the ones that I came across have some judgment. fear to yeah that's a judgment no it's not a judgment it's it's factual it's the one that i came across that doesn't mean that every yes, yes, student yes. is like that uh mm -hmm. have a fear to do it like if if i ask them to do boom chicka boom chicka boom 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 chicka boom chicka boom boom whatever they want to sing and hear in this case is a samba as you can hear um 
they have a little bit afraid to just make sounds of what they hear. If so, if you don't cannot know the words like oye como va, ritmo, then you could maybe at least do they 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 find that very scary. Or find that very scary. Oye como va so then you have not the words but yeah. then you you put the yeah. vocal percussion into it yeah, you could um, it. yes what what i think sean this is a question to you mm -hmm. would it be helpful for people who not dance mm -hmm. and just start with their school and they learn these new new words this small children this young children connected with movement directly oh, yeah. and not oh, yeah. learning that they are sitting still on a chair and learn these words oh yeah no no and no absolutely i, I even think that in uh, in a traditional studio where i often give a lesson as we turn off just using the studio for my students i also give classes right i do a cha-cha class or a salsa class or whatever that is and and the studio made a choice to teach that relatively traditional we punched we, we we push against the boundaries but it often goes like this right it often goes like we teach them basic steps and then we say let's try this on music so that's often how it goes now the more experienced teachers they don't do that they at least say here and let me let you listen to a few salsa songs what is it that you hear can you do that with your hands can you do that maybe with your body whatever it is and then already you see, but but is this correct? I said, I don't care, you know, do whatever you do. There is no right or wrong because I cannot know what you hear. <laughs> you know what you hear, right? And that's the difference. We cannot, no matter how well teachers we are, we can never say, this is what you hear and feel. But you, you can't. That's always a personal interpretation. Because, you know, you can help maybe saying, hey, do you also hear the bongas? Do you hear the difference between the clavis? You can ask them if they hear, but if they don't hear it, no, you have to hear it. <laughs> you have to hear that the accent is on this. Your sound, Tom, you're on mute. Uh, sorry, yeah. Sean, let me go back to the school. Yeah. These words is not even important for your dancing but also for sports oh, yeah. for your daily life mm -hmm. and if i learn the picture hammer mm -hmm. and i see it but i never had a hammer in my hand mm -hmm. i don't know what the function is of it yes but when i know what the function is then i will remember more quickly and if i would take more awareness in it how you hit it and how you bend it and which uh, body parts you use for it, you you get more connected with your, how I would say, with your body. And then I have the word hammer. Well, you start gradually or sudden, or you start sudden and, uh, and gradually, but mostly I would start, uh, try to start more sudden and hit it also sudden yeah and uh, mostly it's a slight uh gradually and sudden is the hit then if you would understand the words and you then you would on, also understand which body part you use and i would do uh, like play basketball or football and you would exactly do the same then um then you also not be only physical um there but also with your awareness with your uh, that is, conscious that is, that, is, that is correct so that's where i think words can help explanation of word uh you know finding the same definition doesn't always mean that my definition is correct but if we have the same definition then at least we have the same understanding by the way mm -hmm. when you said hammer is a really nice way also to explain at least two terms into in the word energy so that people can actually hear, hear that we use axial words it's not just a a random discussion so a hammer in itself has first of all a potential energy that's the energy that is in the hammer because of the weight of the hammer and the power that you maybe have in your hands but once it's not moving it's still potential energy 
once I move it and I hit something, it becomes what we call kinetic energy. That's the energy that is released through it, uh, depending on how much power. So that's already two terms, how you can help someone to understand that, you know, you cannot just say use more or less energy because it, in, this, mm. in a sense that doesn't mean a, a, a no. lot. People don't know what you do. Give it a little bit more context. It becomes a little bit more, more alive by saying, so can you maybe show that you have a lot of potential energy? So you can see that I have a lot of, I don't move yet, but you probably already get a little bit of a sense. Oh, he's building up something. And then what I've, I go back. Kinetic mm -hmm. is, what is that, Sean? Kinetic is when you actually release and make the movement. That movement, the, yes. So if you want to release mm -hmm. and you want to hit the hammer, mm -hmm. can you imagine? Um, you, are, you are already bent. You have it um, with your body part, hands, fingers, and mm -hmm. arm. Mm -hmm. And the underarm would be swing or release or get bigger and hit or goes immediately so it has also different pathways Definitely. and you would also maybe turn your body or look to it or um, turn your head so can you imagine how many um, choices you could make if you would be aware of that one and then uh, you could change that so um, you could manipulate that and then i come back to the hammer the can the potential energy gets kinetic energy so movement yeah. Yeah. yes i would say the energy will transform in a certain power and a certain power when they hit the point will change the form uh it could could change the form yeah could change the form yes yes could change when you hit the nail when it would be a nail or a stone and you would um yeah. um hit it then it, the stone could be break, breaking, or the nail go deeper in the when it would be wood, or uh, the earth would go into the earth or into the wood. So actually, with your kinetic energy, you change because that would be the potential energy would be the origin, the the say the uh, how you say the beginning. And the end would be the change of form. Yes. Yeah. That's I mean. Yeah. And 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 I I was I was I was triggered by this word energy because one of my couples asked me right before they were dancing uh, uh, for them in a major championship. And can you uh, give it? I said, well, let's first. And they were sitting next to each other, and I just said, you know, why don't you and the lady dancer, let's call her Jane. And let's call the man Tarzan just for fun and giggles. Is I said, Jane, why don't you give me your definition of energy? And there was, of course, Tom, you expected already that there was a lot of like a lot of words. And I think it's feel and I think it's doing. And I think so there was a lot of things. And maybe it's all correct. Who knows? Right. And then and then the Tarzan already started, started with, yeah, I kind of agree. And then, <laughs> but if someone says kind of agree, that typically means they don't agree <laughs> and came up with a whole entire definition. So I said, you know, you guys dancing now maybe five, six years together, you have been talking about energy for those four, five, six years, and you never checked with each other what is your definition of energy and your definition. You definitely don't have to take tons of my definition of energy, but at least level set your own definition so that you can communicate around the same thing. That was already an aha. Uh -huh. Words in dance, right? So it's it is now. And Tom, thank you for your explanation uh, that I brought in. You know, potential and kinetic energy is just our explanation of one part of energy. I used actually just to give a little bit of teaching in this uh, in this in this podcast too, uh, to not make it for all about uh, how to use physics, right? The, the physics of movement. movement I said, okay, there is an intensity of movement there. You can talk about energy. We can talk about emotional energy, which is a whole different thing, but we often think that's the same thing. We can think about a give it focus and attention, which is some sort of an energy. 
right? And there is definitely different energies and musicalities. And then last but not least, very often used, if people say that he has a lot of energy, they probably mean has a lot of stamina, right? He has a lot of, of that mm. too. So to give them a little bit in layman terms, uh, that too. Um, so that's what I heard from them. I said, okay, those are the four or five things that they actually want to talk about. Yes. And one question also for me, because mm -hmm. I wrote it, and um, we learn words during mm -hmm. our life when we are born till that we die. Mm -hmm. And if you are not to so study so much, you learn about 27,000 words. Probably. If you uh, study more and you have more these expensive words and more and more words, you have almost double of the words, about 50,000, 48, 52. And um, there is a difference in understanding. This is why we have lawyers, doctors. Um, we have people who work in the uh, compu computer business in the digital world. They use also different, um, different terminologies. And then you get also different understanding. Then we learn this can you imagine these 27,000 words or 50,000 words? How many words you know really? Because I use the words energy, power, space, time, technique, feelings, emotion, and still I didn't know really what I meant. No. And then I did a research to it. And some doors going open and saying, ah, why I didn't know this earlier. And I would say when I would give some uh, advice, teachers, parents, doesn't matter. When you try to speak, speak about your words one time when it's out of your mouth, then it's out of it. And if you use these words do you really know what this word means and how they are connected with your movement yeah that would be my question actually mm -hmm. yeah i don't think there is a or, advi or, or advice i said advice but um if you want to develop that one sean and say i have not enough treasures uh, w words. I don't know how you call that, that you learn words, words, words. And um, how you call that in English? I don't know what to say. What is got? What is got? Yeah, vocabulary. Right. Yes. Know. Yes. Um, would it be um, two questions? Learn more words and learn um, what the word meant really. Would that be an advice, Sean? Well, I think it goes. Uh, it goes in two directions. I think. Uh, I think a good understanding of the meaning of the word is, I think, extremely important. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that the next level would be the nuance between two words. Right. Um, that would also, uh, you know, if if you don't know. Um, because then you can express yourself better. So uh, let me give you an example about feeling, right? Some people have only two words for feeling. I feel really good or I feel bad, <laughs> you know? But you could feel sad, you could feel happy, you fe could feel joy. And this is a question that I often ask. Can you explain me the difference between happy and joy? For a lot of people, there's like, mm, 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 no. And and it's and it's really good to get nuances of words, and that is a more natural growth of vocabulary than just throwing in more words without actually truly knowing the meaning of it. So don't know if that helps, uh, but it does. And, and so now you and I both express ourselves in a language that's not our own. Now I live already for a long time in the United States, and I educated and I was educated for most part in English too. So that helps a lot, but. Most people who um, who uh, second language, in this case English, is not their first language. They get stuck around 20,000, 30,000 words maximum, right? Where a native 
educated person can go even up to 50 to 100,000 words. So we will always be behind that, no matter how many, if you look around me, no matter how books I read, I tested myself on vocabulary, but it has nothing to do with the amount of words, actually. Yes, I some yeah. idea also, Sean, because mm-hmm. my English is not so developed like my Dutch, mm-hmm. because my Dutch is my mother language, so mm-hmm. I, I know the language. And still, I'm still learning Dutch too. But my English is not on the same level. Yeah, it's and impossible. Mm-hmm. No, it's impossible. So actually, it takes a lifetime to improve that. Yeah, definitely. So it takes also a lifetime to improve your body awareness, how to connect this with these words. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely. And then and then at least for a big part, if it comes to official languages like English and Dutch and stuff like that, we, we can go. But if you, and you did that more than I did, you make a study of dance. Uh, and if it comes then to the words used in dance, uh, then there is no, there is no really that you could say, hey, this is the language of dance. First of all, it's taught in different languages right and then we use sometimes the same word for a different thing then we use multiple words for the same thing and you can go and you can go on and on and then not even talk about the nuances and i think your book again gem and that's not why we had this podcast but it it actually fits perfectly is uh is at least doing an attempt to 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 create a good list of words that we can use when we teach and learn and be consistent across the the, and in the translation which um you know i had the honor to help you with that uh, you know, to go from Dutch, you wrote a book in Dutch to translate it into English. And we had many discussions with dancers and dance educators and even just teachers who say, okay, this is the word we mean. Can you find the same word? A really good example is the word shape. Yes. Right? Just shape and form and design. And, form and design. So we, we went from one language, Dutch, to that word form in, 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 in the Netherlands, it sounds the same, but you cannot just take the same word because most people that we came across would say shape when we use the word form in Dutch. Um, yes, yes, that's a, a super um, uh, example, Sean. Mm-hmm. And I use the word form in my method because it comes from the word Latin, yes, forma, forma, figura, and mainly in the Europe countries, they use these words, also even in the Russian language. Yeah. Yeah. And if I go uh, back to a form, form, they think mostly it's a paper in a uh, formula in the, in the English language. But yeah. actually, I don't know if the listeners know that because form is three dimensional and shape is two dimensional in the art world. And if you know that, then uh, the decision to take form or uh, shape, that's a question then uh, in your terminology when you teach, if you use the one or the other one. And design, yes, that's also, if you use design, all words are have an evolution. And when you look to, look to the evolution, uh, when we were 100 years ago, design didn't exist because design is the later word. And then we would also dance differently because we had a different, not a different language, but the evolu- evaluation of the language goes uh, also with the movement, not only the language, but also the movement. And when we would speak like 100 years ago, then we would look a little bit strange to each other, think, okay, how they talk with each other. Because now uh, we speak differently. Hey, guy, um, how how are you? Or hi, or hello. Uh, That's that's my uh, theory. Um, Yes, that's quite funny, uh, Sean. If we dance like one on a year ago, then we would have also the language like one hundred year ago, Probably. and now the language is the, the language is if, um, it's developing, and the movement are developing. 
yeah dance has of course developed even within our lifetime you know uh, it developed a lot and obviously at least that is at least obvious for us uh, is you we need to develop uh, the words that we use in the teaching and learning of dance alongside with it it cannot be the same where we are decided right now if we have to you know, rewrite Jam, the book Jam in, in 10 years, 20, 30 years from now, I'm sure there will be more and different words in there again. Because, Absolutely. you know, and I hope because we can we can influence society, but society influences us too, and both needs to happen. Yes. Uh, it, 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 we cannot force our own thing. Uh, it, it, it needs to go hand in hand. That's the beauty of, uh, of art. It's on one hand a reflection, but sometimes it also pulls the, 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 the society in a certain way. We had a nice podcast around some of these topics, by the way, with an artist um, uh, uh, just the other day. And this would be definitely one of the topics we could talk with him about that. So. We talked about words. Uh, we need to come to a closing of this podcast today. It's not... Um, I thought it was a really interesting discussion, Tom, that you and I had. Uh, 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 you know, uh, there's some some new discoveries, but, you know, a couple of learnings that we need to have from it. You know, can you use your word consistency? Do you have the same definition? Don't forget that there is uh, nuances between different words with almost the same meaning. Think about happy and joy. And then, of course, there is what Tom did so nicely. There's a lot about the inf- intonation that you use when you teach as well. Stand up. Stand up. You know, that hmm. could automatically give a different a movement. Uh, uh, and we say on purposely different and not good or bad. <laughs> right. So that's the, the interpretation of the other one. So did you have some conclusions uh, of our talk today, Tom? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I can just speak for myself. I want to develop also more, try to discover more words. Mm-hmm. Try to connect them with movement, and this keeps me um, actually more ahead of the other ones, yeah. the dancers. And um, so, and the language is not like um, fixed. It could be not that uh, it is lifeful and joyful, and also the movement the same. And this this is now judgment. This is also a conclusion. I can see how many colleagues of teachers uh, could more improve in their uh, words and the connecting with their movements. And um, they do that, but I would see it even more deeper and more wider. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, um, people, uh, that was uh, our, uh, our um, episode of today. You know, with that, we are going to say goodbye, Tom, to uh, to the audience, and hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, find us back with another episode of Dance Jams. This was, of course, Tom Greten and Sean Dorf with the Dance of Words, how language shapes our understanding and experience of dance. You know, I'll say goodbye, Tom. Uh, I already bye pushed bye. you out of it, but we both say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.